Okay, let's go look at the personal compass and guidance. Venus is your personal sense of right and wrong. Your morals, how others in the world are dealt with, placed on a pedestal and raised up as the way life would be more beautiful. Now, this is your Venus is not for others. It's just for us, meaning the interpretation of what you value in relationships, what you love, what is beautiful to you, those things that you're learning about if it's undefined, or those things that you broadcast in your relationships with others, that is what your Venus stands for. It is your mores, okay? your personal moralistic values. Now, Jupiter says what Venus values, Jupiter will act on as a personal law. So the 11.86 mandala cycle establishes personal development. That's the uh, Jupiterian cycle. So this is just what we must do. When you ignore this law, your own Jupiters, you can ignore it at your own peril because Saturn will step in and challenge you or provide pain and suffering because human beings are very much motivated by the avoidance of pain. Saturn will act up in your design and you cannot ignore the problems that Saturn brings. So Saturn is here where our actions and beingness is judged. If we are correct, Saturn is silent and leaves us alone. If incorrect, this area will not work. It will be problematic or it will be a thorn in our side. Saturn literally standing for the bones and aging and calcification, remember. So if you're having problems with Saturn, wherever that gate activation is, then you can look back up to your Venus and Jupiter and contemplate your ability to follow your authority when it comes to these themes. It might feel uncomfortable to face these themes. When we're correct, Saturn will be silent and leave us alone. If incorrect, this area will not work. Remember, Saturn brings over seriousness. Okay, it will be a thorn in our side, whatever that thematic happens to be. Usually, most people, if they're operating out of integrity, will recognize the problem that Saturn shows up like in their lives is what I've noticed anyway. So getting their attention with or just asking a few questions that give you a touchstone into that signpost with them is really helpful as far as your ability to interpret that person's chart or change your analysis, its focus in a way that's going to most land with them. Because I'll tell you in my experience, if I begin a chart analysis, chasing down the wrong rabbit hole, let's say, I always ask that person, you know, um, if to, to connect with me vocally, just share with me, even if it's a, re a recording that I need to do with them, I need to hear where they're at. So I ask them to write me. So depending on what frequency that person is coming up with, that's how I'll start my analysis and what I'll emphasize. As you know, we know so much about human design. I could spend a whole week talking about somebody's charts, a connection with them every single day and not get to all of the bases of the, you know, all the downloads that I could give them. That would be overwhelming. But I'm just saying, if you need some guidance on how to treat this person as far as where they're at. Saturn is a signpost. It's a signpost of operating incorrectly. So the Saturn in an undefined state, in a gate 40. So you ask that person, are you having any digestive issues? How's your stomach? You know, um, do you ever get pain in your stomach? And if that's something that they start rambling on into all kinds of things. So maybe you don't do this in a foundation analysis, but you do do it in your coaching practice. Then you know that you need to go back up to Venus and check out what's going on with Venus. Yeah. Okay. So Saturn, Venus, Jupiter. Let's go look at our 
guinea pig, Albert Einstein, as an example. We can see his Saturn's up here in the right eye and down here in the gate of fucking <laughs> sexual relations. Who knows? Let's see. Going down. Venus. We'll start with in a defined heart center. We know that the 51 is about the gall. The gall. Ability to respond to disorder and shock through recognition and adaption. But here we have the second line of withdrawal. So the egoism to reject withdrawal and face possible defeat is part of how his Venus, his values and relating, would appreciate relationships, you know, appreciate the value of being in relationships, has the egoism to reject withdrawal and face possible defeat, to be able to handle that shock, responding to the shock as part of his initiation here. And then where we go from Venus is into Jupiter, and Jupiter brings us the line of burnout. So uncontrollable feelings and accompanying emotional outbursts here in the gate 30 gate of feelings freedom recognized as an illusion and limitation accepted as a fate this brings an unrealistic pace that begs misfortune which is what he is learning about so uncontrollable feelings accompanying emotional outbursts would be the expression of that Jupiter and this in the emotional system being part of where he has his Saturn further up that stream of feeling and Saturn, when we get there, looks like here, conscious Saturn is gate 17, the gate of opinion. The ancient law that those who wish to rule must know how to serve. So a first line is openness, and this brings the possibility of having many opinions or the flip side of limiting opinions only to what is pleasing. So in context with the design, Saturn as a painful punishment I would ask maybe, do you ever find yourself not wanting to look forward or look at the pattern? Do you ever find yourself not wanting to, or when you share your opinions, you get really frustrated? Do you have any problems with your right eye? Mm. Do you feel this insane amount of pressure to be on time? <laughs> okay, because that's logical. Logic always wants to be on time. This is an inability, if it's in suffering mode, pain mode, to actually look at where things are headed, you know, and, and literally having problems with one's right eye if Saturn is there. So just checking into and seeing if he is honoring his integrity of being because Saturn is the signpost for not honoring the integrity of your being. Saturn brings us discipline. Now, Venus here, the gate of the behavior of the self, we know the first lines are always modest. Okay, the innate sense to know and accept one's place is, is unconscious value system. So knowing one's place and how to act despite circumstances is the exaltation. On the detriment side, oversensitivity to external conditioning of behavior. Gate 10 is about knowing one's behavior behavioralistic place with the first line there. So that would be his unconscious values and relating that would contribute to this definition to that higher self and make uh, that person more attractive. You know, this is what you find attractive. So he would find attractive 34s, 57s, 20s, quite literally, depending on whether or not he responds to them right? If they're aligned for him. And that would be his values in relating. Now, Jupiter here in the 41, we're looking at that law and protection being something that needs to be obeyed. This is the gate of contraction decrease, the limitation of resources, which maximizes the development of potential. In the sixth line, we know it's far reaching, the line value being contagion. So this is about ultimately looking for progress in the life, right? Because it's looking all the way down the stream, stream of feeling, 
and it reaches the end to progress. So he's learning about the law that maximization of potential not only ends in decrease, but inevitably such transcendence benefits others. So on one side, he would recognize the fuel for recognition through feelings. And on the other side, he would feel the fuel for secret or repressed feelings. So this is the drive to feel that is creating his personal law and protection. So that is the Jupiter meeting up the burnout on the other side. We know that that was a fourth line and a sixth line. Yeah, not necessarily something that is comfortable because we know that stream is very, very volatile, potentially. Okay, Saturn. Saturn, the discipline and the limitation, the body here, having this gate of crisis in conjunction with his conscious personality sun. The rule of cycles in which a decline is a natural but not enduring stage, the line of the underground. Now, exaltation shows immunity to crisis as both generator and survivor and self-betraying nervousness in times of crisis. So how I might say or language that to ask, you know, what's going on. Do you feel that you have a lot of problems in sharing your fear of, I know that is um, experiential inadequacy and that might be a little too much. Do you have, do you feel like you have problems with facing new experiences might be a simpler way of putting it. You know, is there something inside of you that feels really uncomfortable when you're facing a new experience? Because the fifth line here, survivor and immunity to crisis. I mean, this is about being able to rise to the occasion. Fifth lines do that. They have this potential to face the difficulties and bring forth new solutions. So a Saturn out of integrity a lot of pain, a lot of hiding, right? Being a, a shy or reserved or, you know, um, feeling a lot of heaviness. Remember, you can use the term heaviness with Saturn because Saturn has all this weight to it, this density. Remember, limitation, restrictiveness. It's literally uh, being able to exhale because the body side is different keynoting. So on the Saturn for the body, do you ever feel like you're having difficulty exhaling, you know, fully exhaling so that you can draw your next breath? Like you can't just can't exhale. Difficulty breathing. That might be another thing. We know that the solar plexus is about the lungs and the nervous system. So that might be a telltale sign, signpost. Okay. Okay. 